Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, November 25th, 2011. I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I'm going to go into this video here. I'm going to change it up and just uh, do my introduction first and then we'll go into the video. Uh, one quick note is, is what you're going to see is Dr. Kaku talk about these contact lenses that will plug into the net. Scientists have made a contact lens with a built-in LED, a step towards a future where online searching takes a blink of an eye. Now this is a step towards be going into full cyborg status. Now this is coming on faster and faster and we're going to have these experts come in and tell us you know how it's going to be laid out and how it's going to be good for us and what some of the downfalls or stuff will be but just remember this is the same individual that basically said if you're a traditionalist and you don't want to go into this one world government this one uh world currency one world language one world religion which we're almost there already you are a terrorist you are a terrorist if you don't want to evolve the way that these um, experts, these social engineers, want you to do it. So here, let's check it out. And I won't be able to expand it, and I'm not even sure if it'll be able to play. It may be pulled, so I might have to go back and edit it out for copyright uh, infringement. So here. The future. The internet is going to be in our contact lens. And when the internet is in our contact lens, you blink and you will go online. And if you meet somebody at a meeting, a conference, or a classroom, and you don't know who they are, your glasses will identify who they are and print out their biography in your contact lens so you will always know who you are talking to. At a cocktail party, you will always know who to suck up to if you're looking for a job. And if the person is speaking Chinese, no problem. Your contact lens will translate what the person is saying, even as they speak. Now, you've seen this before in the movie, The Terminator. Remember the Terminator movie? He lived in what is called augmented reality. Now, virtual reality, hey, that's for children, that's for kids, that's for gaming, it's a lot of fun, I do it. However, augmented reality is for adults who want to interact with people, but who want to know who they are. They want to know what they are saying if they're speaking in a different language. And if you think about it, this is going to change commerce, tourism, it's going to change the way we live. So networking today has limitations, distance, language. Those barriers are going to fall once we have the, the internet in our contact lens. The first thing you see when you walk in the front door of Banner Ironwood Hospital is a sanitizer. We're exposed all the time. Alcohol-based sanitizers help during the flu season for patients and doctors. But this hospital is going the extra mile, requiring staff, doctors, and even volunteers to get the flu vaccine. It really makes us uh, one of the safest hospitals in the state uh, regarding uh, uh, flu, spread of the flu, and, and uh, safety of our patients. Most hospitals ask their employees to get a flu shot voluntarily. About 50% comply. Not enough for Ironwood Medical Center. Dr. Mike O'Connor wants everyone to get the shot by December 1st. It's mandatory. We know that we can transmit the virus from healthcare workers to our patients who are very vulnerable. A mask. That's what employees here at this hospital who cannot take that shot because of medical reasons, this is what they'll be wearing around the hospital. Workers with no medical exemptions and refuse the vaccine will lose their jobs. That's our commitment to our patients. And Dr. O'Connor was the first in line at the hospital for the flu shot. Diane Ryan, Fox 10. So there you go, everybody. Um, you saw that video. He was basically getting at what? That uh, the, the language barrier and all that uh, one world language. Um, so he did kind of go into what I was talking about. Uh, that's that's where it's going right now. And you can say, well, isn't that a good thing? Well, it's like, no, there's that's what's so cool about life. Um, just in my opinion is what is a mystery of not knowing people and getting to know them. So uh, Occupy LA says city is offering incentives to move. I'll finish up with the economy and then I'll move in um, to uh, some climate change BS and um, other stuff, including eugenics. My website is ggnonline.com. So city officials are basically uh, bribing these protesters to vacate the city hall lawn they have camped on for uh, seven weeks. Then moving on here. 
Um, we have older suburban struggling uh, near poor startle the senses. It says here they drive cars but sell them new ones. They earn paychecks but not big ones. Many own homes. Uh, most pay taxes. Half are married and nearly half live in the suburbs. None are poor but many describe themselves as barely scraping by. That's of course the working poor. And the irony is that uh, there's a decent amount of those individuals that fit into that group that were actually at Walmart and Target and uh, all those other department stores um, first in line. It says here, what's killing America? U.S. ranks 28th in life expectancy, lower than Chile and Greece. While it pays the most for health care, a new survey on health care is revealing that you may not be getting what you pay for if you check into a U.S. hospital. It says the health care system is more effective at delivering high cost and quality care than other developed nations, according to a study conducted by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. So it says the study said Americans pay more than almost uh, $8,000 per person uh, for health care each year, far more than any other country, but still die earlier than their peers in their industrialized world. So we, we keep uh, hearing that, right, about the, uh, oh, longevity. See, this is progress. You got Kaku saying, oh, we're going to have contact lenses and, uh, you know, augmented and virtual reality and cyborgs and, like I said, progress, technology. Well, no, people are dying earlier. I've mentioned this before. But, uh, you know, basically government and all their little um, organizations will continue to put out propaganda saying that we're living longer, right? And uh, we got to get rid of some of these people. There's too many people on the earth. That's where it's going. It says North Korea's children in need of food agencies uh, warned. So North Korea's harvest this fall were expected to increase by 8.5% compared with a year ago. But the most vulnerable segments of the population, especially young children, urgently need international aid, two United Nations agencies said on Friday. So I'm sure there's many problems that cause um, these people not to have enough food, but yet the global government, the United Nations, uh, is going to go in there and help them uh, with uh, companies like Monsanto and GMO food, right, and aid uh, that's poisoned and tainted like in Kenya, where it, it actually poisoned the children. Monsanto partners with U.S. aid to push genetically modified corn in Nepal, remember? Suicides, record suicides, quarter of a million suicides in India with the farmers in the past 20 years. Just uh, uh, an atrocious number. And, of course, the solutions will be uh, non-governmental organizations and um, education, right? And healthcare. Occupy GMOs. Protesters block access to manufacturing plant filled with animal frankenfeed. So a lot more protesters in Europe uh, for these GMOs. Uh, it says here, a group of protesters in France that decided to make a statement by blocking uh, or blockading the entrances to the Glon Sanders animal feed plant in um, uh, France. Actually, France was one of those countries that was ripping out grapes, uh, GMO grapes, too. A new, uh, new food bill in New Zealand takes away human right to grow food. It says um, here that the new bill will make it a privilege and not a right to grow food. The author goes in there and says that she read the bill, and it's being brought in because of the WTO, the World Trade Organization, which is, of course, has the U.S. FDA behind it and, of course, uh, big business such as Monsanto. It looks like this New Zealand food bill will pave the way to uh, reduce the plant diversity and small owner operations in New Zealand, for example, by the way of controlling the legality of seed saving and bartering and trading, right? Like Just like in India, again, livestock farmers say ethanol consumes too much corn. Livestock farmers are demanding a change in the nation's ethanol policy, claiming current rules could lead to spikes in meat prices and even shortages at supermarkets if corn growers have a bad year. I didn't mention this after the last video with the Indian suicides, and I'll finish up with that uh, with that issue, is what um, the prices, well, the, the commodity markets are completely rigged. <laughs> so uh, that that's another uh, solution, but they're not going to address that, uh, uh, that solution, right, to uh, end the rigging of the markets. Uh, uh, basically uh, suppressing commodity prices, especially with gold and especially with silver. It says here, radiation covers 8% of Japan. Japan's science ministry says 8% of the country's surface area has been contaminated by radiation from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant. So you can go in there and check that out. All the links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Doctor says government should implement cap-and-trade tax scheme on junk food. 
and uh, goes on here and it says Dr. Christina Lewis from the HMS Department of Population ooh, and her colleague Meredith Rosenthal recently published a report in the New England Journal of Medicine suggesting the implementation of fat taxes on foods that they consider to be unhealthy. The idea behind the plan is to provide public health, increase productivity, and ultimately reduce people, i.e. health care costs. Um, so this is the this is the crazy thing is that uh, in the future you're going to have um, fat not fasting but you're going to have um, governments uh, eventually or NGOs uh, 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 starving the people out basically depopulating through um, uh, through these little trade deals or whatever they are like things like this where they will slowly uh, cut you cut your food off so people can't really afford better quality food so they so they eat this quote junk food right because that's what they can afford to at least get them to the next day and um, and then eventually they're gonna make it so they can't even get that and then they die right and that's part of the de depopulation agenda they're probably not gonna just throw people in FEMA camps and, and get the burners lit and start you know uh, just killing people. It's probably going to be more subtle where people do it voluntarily like that. Uh, ClimateGate 2.0 is here, and you can go in there and check that out. More devastating ClimateGate emails were released, uh, well, a couple days ago on the 22nd. I've been waiting to get to this, but uh, you can go in there and check it out. All the links talking about um, uh, basically 2007 NRC review of hokey, hockey sticks, sorry, but it is a hoax uh, rigged by alarmists and then um, here, uh, use me, but don't quote me. Man calls swindle producer a right-wing hack. IPCC climate claims falsified by 2010 record high CO2 levels. Remember, we were talking about the Himalayas, and they were saying that the uh, Himalayas mountains and the glaciers in there were melting, and they were gone, and then it comes to find out that they lied. They flat-out lied. So I have plenty to get to still. I'm going to keep moving go there and check that out. Chinese regime pushes for $100 billion climate change fund. And um, so the Chinese, like they really want to do this, they're just going to have a nice slush fund for their depopulation measures, all in the name of CO2. It says here, uh, and just remember when I say uh, eliminating the CO2 or your CO2 carbon footprint, they're talking about your bloodline. So eventually you'll get cut off. Did U.S. climate weapon knock out Russian probe? It says here, Russian ex experts are struggling to decode the fresh telemetry signals received from the stricken photos, or sorry, Phobos grunt probe. Meanwhile, rumors are circulating in America's ionosphere or ionospheric research site in Alaska. Harp caused the spacecraft's uh, failure. General Lieutenant uh, Nikolai Rodionov. Uh, who used the command uh, the country's ballistic missile early warning system told Interfax that, quote, the powerful electromagnetic radiation of those sites in Alaska may have affected the control systems of the interplanetary probe. Wow. But let's not forget they have facilities, what, in Puerto Rico and then in Norway, and Russia actually also does weather modification. Man-made, along with China, man-made super flu could kill half humanity, a virus with the potential to kill up half the world's population has been made in a lab. Now academics and bioterrorism experts are arguing over whether to publish the recipe and whether the research should have been done in the first. Then we have free HIV tests offered at DC DMV, not kidding, at one department motor vehicle office in the nation's capital. Uh, motorists can get a driver's license where they're going to get their biometric uh, facial scan and thumb scan and all that. Uh, temporary tags, i.e. they're paying their tax for their car that they don't own. That's what it is, registration. Uh, the, it's actually you're paying a property tax for the car that the state owns. And something wholly unrelated to the road, a free HIV t so yeah, you know, um, a lot of people that have more money, they'll do it online, whereas these people may have to go inside. I don't know, but basically it's eugenics. They're just calling off people, useless eaters, as I call them, uh, immunize or lose benefits, parents told. Parents who now have their children uh, fully Im immunized or vaccinated will be stripped of family tax benefits under a scheme announced by the federal government. This is in Australia, of course. All right, here we go. A new immunization check will be introduced for one-year-olds to supplement the existing immunization checks at two and five years old. God, that's just pure evil. Some conventional doctors now discriminating against patients who choose not to vaccinate their children. So uh, goes in there and it's and they're talking about these fringe parents. Dr. Tyrone is one such intolerant doctor believes individuals who refuse uh, vaccinations are a threat to his patients. This one is one of the reasons he refuses to see them. And he says that, uh, he respects individual patients' freedom of health choice, but now insists that all of his patients either comply with his vaccination guidelines or else look for another doctor.
There's something fishy about the White House's $433 million investment in a small pox vaccine that was untested. Go in there and check that out. Then we have this, CDC and ADA now advised to uh, avoid using fluoride. That's right, BPA spikes 1,200% after eating canned food or soup. Med says here, wrong baby injected during medical procedure and kills healthy fetus. Then next up, uh, we have book by Japanese killer, a British woman uh, set to become a film. That's right, and Generation Y is a relationship-free zone by design. I have short-term memory loss, so I don't even remember meeting you. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.